The process of fertilization is actually the beginning of pregnancy. And as a student nurse, a student midwife, or a practicing nurse and midwife, it is important that you understand this process because it will be very embarrassing if a patient or any random person walks up to you and asks you to explain this process and you're looking like a moron. So in today's video, I am going to be giving a very simplified explanation of the process of fertilization. Disclaimer, this is not the replacement for textbooks and class lectures. This is a very watered down version of the explanation. I want it to be very simple for anybody to understand. That's why I am breaking it down into very, very simple things. So when you go back to read your textbooks, which you have the more extensive um, description of the process of fertilization, you would be able to understand better. Okay, so let's go. <music> Hi, my name is Molly Ayabusari. I am a Nigerian registered nurse and a registered midwife. I'm also a United Kingdom registered nurse. On this channel, I film content related to nursing, healthcare, and my lifestyle generally as a nurse. So if you're interested in content like that, do click on subscribe button to join the YouTube family and also on the bell icon so you don't miss out when I drop another amazing video. Okay, so first, let us talk about what fertilization is. In very simple terms, fertilization is the process by which the egg of the female, which is the ovum, and the male sex cell, which is the sperm, comes together to form what is called a zygote. And this process actually happens during ovulation. Ovulation is a phase during the menstrual cycle. I'm not here to discuss menstrual cycle. If you want me to make a particular video on menstrual cycle, let me know in the comment section. So I'm just going to be talking about how the egg and the sperm fuses together up to the point that it becomes implanted in the uterus. So the first step is egg and sperm mix together. They form a zygote how by combining all their DNA material. So the sperm comes with 23 chromosomes while the egg also comes with 23 chromosomes and they both fuse together to form a zygote which would have 46 chromosomes. Are we together? So now let's go to day one. So by the end of day one, this zygote has been formed and contains all the genetic material of the parent cells which are the sperm and the eggs split into two identical cells. It splits into two identical cells meaning the two cells contain the same genetic material everything about them is the same by the end of day three this zygote that is divided into two cells will have divided into eight cells all these eight cells will be clustered together in a ball and by the end of day four these eight cells will have divided into 16 cells called a morula if you've ever had any of your matrons or any of your senior nurses making fun of you, if they want to ask you if you're pregnant, maybe you're sleeping in class, they use this term, hey, morula in situ. That was the first time I actually heard the word morula and I didn't know what it actually meant until when I read about fertilization, I realized that morula is like the 16 clustered cells <laughs> after a zygote continues to divide till day four. So you can always use that term when you're trying to like ask someone if you're pregnant. You ask them, Morula in situ. You learn something today. So after this Morula has been formed, the division process is not complete. Because at the end of the sixth day, the division would have gone up to the point of it forming a blastocyst. Now what's the difference between a blastocyst and a Morula? While a Morula is a 16 cells, 16 identical cells all clustered together, a blastocyst or a blastocyte, pardon my pronunciation, is so much more cells than the morula but in a hollow ball formation which means it has two sides it has the outer side and the inner side so the inner side it was goes on to form the embryo which will eventually become the baby while the outer side is what or the outer layer is what forms the placenta obviously we know where placenta is right the organ that is attached to the uterus and helps transmission of you know nutrients from the mother to the baby that is what the outer layer of the blastocyst will go ahead to form now by the end of day six to seven there would be implantation in the uterus that means the blastocyst would have gotten to the uterus and attach itself to the uterine lining this is called implantation and once this implantation occurs it starts to get its nutrients from the mother and it will continue to grow and develop so let's take the process again day zero sperm and egg comes together all their genetic material is fused together to form a zygote which will have a total of 46 chromosomes day one the zygote splits into two cells day two to three the zygote splits into eight cells 
and by the end of day four it has split into 16 cells known as the marula it continues to divide up to day six which it would have formed a blastocyst which would have a hollow ball it's two layers it's two sides or two layers the inner layer is what goes ahead to form the embryo and the outer layer is what goes ahead to form the placenta and by the end of day seven the blastocyst would be implanted in the wall of the uterus and the embryo starts getting its nutrients from the mother very simple very easy to understand if you're preparing for your midwifery exam specifically i have something for you there's a one month study plan you can get by my website to prepare you for your exam you can also use the link below to find practice tests specifically for midwifery students and you know maternal and child death questions to help you practice towards your exam if you like the sound of that use the link in my description box below to get to my website if you want more videos click on this playlist here and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye